On 10th March 2019, flight Ethiopian 302 en route from Addis Ababa to Nairobi in Africa crashed shortly after takeoff. There were over 149 passengers and 8 crew on board the aircraft. The flight was operated by Boeing 737 MAX with the registration Echo Tango Alpha Victor Juliet or ETAVJ. The aircraft was brand new and it was delivered back in November, which means it was only 5 months old. Very recently, back in 2018, to be specific on the 29th of October 2018, a flight Lion Air 610 en route from Jakarta to Dabati Amir Airport in Indonesia also crashed shortly after takeoff. That flight was also operated by a Boeing 737-8 MAX with the registration Papa Kilo Lima Quebec Papa. There were 181 passengers on board the aircraft along with 8 crew, all which unfortunately died in the crash. Two brand new aircraft by Boeing, two crashes within a span of only 5 months. Now the question coming in everybody's mind right now is, is the Boeing 737 MAX safe to fly? Now to understand that and to see if whether it is safe to fly, we need to understand what actually happened in the crashes. It's important to know what happened, why did it happen and is the aircraft, the Boeing 737-8 MAX, still safe to fly on. Now in this video, I'll be talking about the technical aspects of the first crash only, the Lion Air 610 crash, because at this point of time, it is too early to speculate what happened on the Ethiopian Airlines crash. But because we have a preliminary report of the Lion Air crash, I can tell you what happened in that. So let's start with the Boeing 737-8 MAX. It's a new aircraft, it was delivered to supersede the Boeing 737-800NG. Now obviously it's a new aircraft, there are some changes that lead to more efficiency in the aircraft. Here, imagine this is a Boeing 737. I know this isn't a 737, it's actually 787, but unfortunately I do not have a 737 model so I can only use this for the image right now. So imagine this is a Boeing 737. Now what happened? In the new aircraft, there were new engines installed. So if you see over here, the new engines were installed a bit forward and a bit higher. Now what that led to is that when you advanced full thrust on the Boeing 737-8 MAX, Boeing discovered that if the aircraft is in a climb, the change of thrust line or in simple words, the aircraft balance due to the new engines at a new position with the same old aircraft design led to the nose increasing its angle of attack. Now the issue is there is a primary effect of control which is also known as a primary law in aerodynamics that is when you increase the nose of the aircraft and you increase the angle the, your speed will ultimately start to reduce and there will also come an angle of attack for example on a Cessna it's 16 degrees at a specific angle of attack your aircraft will stall no matter what the speed is. In a stall, it basically means that your lift produced has become zero and your aircraft will ultimately dive down unless you can recover that aircraft. On an aircraft such as a Boeing 737 or any other bigger aircraft, it becomes uh, very difficult to recover from a stall and that is why there are multiple systems installed on the aircraft to reduce the chances of a stall. Now, on the Boeing 737-8 MAX, when Boeing discovered this issue, they installed a system known as the MCAS system, which is a system you might have heard in the news very famously. What the MCAS system does is, as Boeing discovered, this aircraft can continue increasing its angle of attack because of the engines. The, Boeing, the MCAS system was designed to remain in the background and if the aircraft continues increasing its angle of attack, the MCAS system will automatically trim the aircraft with the use of the horizontal stabilizers. It will trim the aircraft down so that this chance of stalling does not occur. That was the main purpose of the MCAS system. Now a question arises in everybody's mind, where does the MCAS system get its data from? Now there are small angle of attack vanes installed on the left and right of underneath the cockpit windows of the aircraft. These are known as angle of attack vanes or AOFA vanes which use a complex measurement and mathematical calculation which is done by the computer to let the pilot know what is the angle of attack of the aircraft. The angle of attack of the aircraft in simple words is the angle of the aircraft or the wings with the relative airflow. Now the MCAS system was designed to be in the background. It was not known to many pilots. It was not included in the Boeing 737 flight training manuals and there is a possible reason for that. The Boeing 737 is Boeing's fastest selling airplane in history. 
As of today, there are 355 aircraft has been delivered to operators all around the world and there are many more orders. Now, plus point of buying the Boeing 737-8 MAX that was initially released by Boeing was that the pilots do not have to undergo any special training to transition from the old Boeing 737 to the new Boeing 737-8 MAX and that was a major plus point for buying the aircraft. Now, what that actually did is many features were removed from the manuals because it was not considered necessary to let the pilots know about that. One such system was the MCAS system. The MCAS system was virtually unknown to many pilots before the Lion Air crash because many pilots got to know after that that there is an issue exists in the Boeing 737 which leads to the aircraft increasing its angle of attack. The initial investigation into the flight line F610 showed that the angle of attack sensor on the left side of the aircraft, the captain's side basically, was given wrong data. Now this was also present in the previous flight before the flight that led to the crash of the aircraft but it was changed after that flight. The sensor was changed but still most probably it was giving wrong data. Now what that basically means is that the MCAS system could not defend between the right and wrong angle of attack. If for example the angle of attack sensor was showing a higher angle of attack that was actually there, the MCAS system would automatically trim the aircraft nose down. Now in the case of wrong data and an excessively nose down attitude trim that would have led to the aircraft diving into the ground. Now that is exactly what happened in the Lion Air 610 crash as reported by the initial investigation. What happened is there was wrong data feeding into the, into the angle of attack that led to the MCAS system going into a nose down attitude. The pilot initially tried to fight this system. He did not know, most probably he did not know how to de deactivate the system. But when ultimately the computer won, the aircraft went into a nose down crash into the sea. Now a little while after this crash, Boeing released an operation update on all 737 to miss mostly its operators telling that there has been an issue. An issue might occur due to these faulty sensors and that in case this happens, it trained the pilots how to deactivate the system and how to resume normal operations. Similarly, this was obviously not a permanent solution, so they promised that they will release a software update that was promised to release in the end of 2018 but as of now it still hasn't been released and it is now rumored to be released in April 2019. Now let's come to the Ethiopian Boeing 737-8 MAX crash. What happened in that? As I said before, it is too early to speculate what happened, but investigators have told people and media sources that the crash site of both the aircraft have shown similarities, meaning that the Lion Air crash and the Ethiopian airline crash crash site and the amount and scattering of debris has shown similarities. Another report has also shown that the pilot reported unreliable airspeed after takeoff and Flight Radar 24 data has determined that the aircraft was in unstable climb during takeoff, meaning it wasn't in a steady climb but it was leveling off then climbing then descending and that is what is known as an unstable climb. Now the question that comes in your mind, comes in my mind, comes in a lot of people's minds is is the Boeing 737 MAX safe to fly? Now initially the FAA and Boeing reported that there is no sufficient evidence to permanently ground or temporarily ground the Boeing 737 MAXs around the globe. But different aviation divisions starting from China, Oman and a lot of other countries had grounded the Boeing 737 MAX until the reason was found behind this crash. Two days ago, President Donald Trump signed an executive order and Boeing and FAA grounded all Boeing 737 MAXs around the world until a, a fix and the solution and the reason for this crash is found. For now, the Boeing 737-8 MAX has been grounded all around the world and you will not be flying on any one of them soon until the reason for this crash is found. Now, what is of quite importance is the black box is found from the Ethiopian Airlines crash, the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder have been sent to France for decryption and to understand what actually happened in the crash. Until we know the results of that investigation, we, we cannot say for sure if the Boeing 77-8 MAX is still safe to fly because this issue may come on any other Boeing 77-8 MAX and if the pilots are not trained well to disengage that system but still it's better to be safe than sorry. Now the question that is coming on everybody's mind is, is the Boeing 737 MAX still safe to fly? Now until investigators can find the reason behind both of these crashes and 
there is a permanent fixed release for the Boeing 737 MAX. Most probably the Boeing 737 MAX as it is grounded, it won't be flying anywhere soon. But after that fix comes, then most probably it will be tested again to see that this actually, this issue does not happen again. Because the main purpose of every aviation investigation is to find out what happened and to find out how to prevent that in the future. So until then, the Boeing 77 MAX most probably will remain grounded and will not fly. And most probably after that, once this issue has been fixed and a software update or a design change or whatever is produced out of this investigation, most probably after that the aircraft will be safe because Boeing has a very good history of uh, producing airplanes and a clear example of that is the Boeing 737-800NG next generation. Now a point I wanted to uh, discuss over here, many people have been confusing the Boeing 737-8 MAX or the Boeing 77 MAX with the Boeing 77NG. Now the Boeing 77NG was produced back in 1997 and it is the most widely used narrowbody all around the world. Currently there have been 7000 aircraft built and they are used all around the world. A famous operator in Pakistan is also Sreen Air and I have seen many comments on my Sreen Air videos saying that the aircraft that Sreen Air uses is not safe because they have been involved in a recent crash. That is not true. The aircraft used by many airlines around the world are the Boeing 737-800-NG next generation. Those are, have been proven safe though they also have had their fair share of crashes but still they are in use all around the world and these, those are not affected by this recent system. These are only the Boeing 737 Maxes which have been released very recently and in back in 2017 they were released and they are operational since then. And since they've all been grounded so there's no need to worry about flying on any one of them soon. But still it is important to know what happened and my condolences go out to all the families affected. There have been over 350 deaths and it is sad to see that actually the companies have started taking action only after the death of human life and the loss of human life but still an important uh, issue that needs to be addressed is automation and how pilots have become com complacent after automation. Automation can never replace human sense in my opinion. A computer cannot replace a pilot in any way according to my views because you have seen that if a computer remains in charge and a slight disagreement occurs between two systems it can lead to an instant crash. The pilot died trying to fight that disagreement but unfortunately in the end the computer won. So that is all. My condolences again to all the families affected and let's hope that we can find a result and cause for the crashes and a fix for these aircraft in the future. Let's hope that the result of these investigations comes out soon so that they can get closure. Be sure to like, share and subscribe this video if you found this interesting. You can also check out some of my other general aviation videos. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.